We live in a terrible place in time. The American West is a disgusting, awful, dirty, dangerous place. Look around you. Everything out here that's not you wants to kill you. Outlaws, angry drunk people, scorned hookers, hungry animals, diseases, major and minor injuries, Indians, the weather. You, you can get killed just going to the bathroom. See those guys over there? The guys who work in the silver mines? See what they're eating? Ribs doused in hot sauce. They eat hot, spicy foods every meal of the day. You know why? Because their palates are so completely dulled from inhaling poison gas 12 hours a day down in the mines. That's all they can taste. You know what that kind of diet does to your guts? They literally die from their own farts. We're delighted to be joined by Seth MacFarlane, creator of Family Guy, American Dad, Oscar Hose, who follows up his hugely successful debut film, Ted, with comedy western A Million Ways to Die in the West. How are you, Seth MacFarlane? Good, how are you? Very well, thank you very much. Um, when did the seed for this film start and the idea for it start? Uh, you know, we were at the tail end of um, rewrites for Ted, and uh, I was working with my co-writers, Alec and Wellesley, and, and we were um, watching old uh, westerns when we should have been writing. <laughs> and um, we're looking at an old Clint Eastwood western called Hang 'em High, and, and we uh, uh, just started riffing on, on, uh, on, on... Well, first of all, we started talking about the fact that we're all fans of the genre, of the western genre. And then we, we just kind of started riffing on how horrible it would be if any of us had to live in that place in time and it would just be such a dangerous bummer on a, on a daily basis. You're either bored or terrified. <laughs> uh, and, and that was sort of the genesis of this movie. I think it's fair to say that there's a, a healthy amount of swearing in the film. Yeah. Um, how much of that is all in the script or is it a case when you're filming, you're just kind of freestyling and sometimes it, you're just effing and blinding and it comes out and you keep it in the movie? Most of it is scripted. Most of it is in the script. Um, you know, if you improvise and you throw one in there, then it happens. But most of it's scripted. Have you ever found that you've had to sort of rein things in? You've gone, that's a bit too much. I mean, I know people like me to be irreverent, but that's one step too far. Yeah, I mean, there is always a pass. We had to do it on TED and less so on this movie because there there, there wasn't there weren't quite as many, you know, uses of the, of the word. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, as there were on Ted, but you do have to make a pass and go through. And all right, well, it's they, we say it eight times in this scene. That's probably too much. So you go through and you find ways to to pull them out. But that that was that wasn't really a problem on this movie. It was the biggest problem learning to ride a horse? That was a, yeah. That was that was difficult. <laughs> that was you know I, I took to it fairly quickly. I just never really felt comfortable <laughs> doing it. Um, let's talk about Liam Neeson if we can and. and I won't mention his character name because hopefully you, you can tell everybody what he's called and, and the genesis of that because his character name obviously sounds like yeah. someone very famous for their westerns. Uh, were there other variations of that name before you got to this specific one? To Clinch Le no, Clinch Leatherwood was uh, was always his character's name. <laughs> but obviously you said we want something that sounds like Clint Eastwood and Clinch Leatherwood just was the first thing. Yeah, we, we wanted somebody who could bring real gravitas to the part and somebody who was really going to be a threat to Albert. You know, for a comedy like this to work, there has to be some sort of grounding and, and something about the story has to be real and, and, and believable and taken seriously. And, and for us, that was, uh, that was uh, an, an important role that Clinch needed to fill. And so we really wanted a heavy-duty actor to come in and, and do it and um and uh, you know we were so lucky to get liam i do think more people should be called clinch though clinch it's is a great a, name. it's a good it's name it's going to be on those top 10 lists yeah next if year, you're ever sure. if you're ever you know in the situation to name another baby i'm it? not having any more of her oh, okay. so it's fine uh, <laughs> in terms of charlie's their own why why charlie's for this this show i mean it's the, the 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 scenes with you guys like when you're on top of mountains and things just chatting it just feels like conversation it feels kind of all you know, ad libbed and, and things like that. It feels yeah. really natural with you guys. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know that it's it's. I mean, there there is some ad libbing, but you know, a, a lot of it was the laughs and whatnot are are, are genuine. I mean, we we really did hit it off, and we really had a great time out there. And we did kind of bond over the fact that neither one of us really wanted to be in this harsh climate every day. <laughs> so, um, you know, th those laughs and and that relationship is 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 genuine. Like it was it was a good time. 
And from what I know of Charlize Theron, which is very little, but I, obviously I know that she's, you know, incredibly glamorous and does the ads for the fashion houses and fantastic. But then I've seen her on stage talking about movies and she's just very laid back and funny and a bit dirty and a bit, you know, just kind of cool. And I think that really comes across in the movie, doesn't it? That she's not this kind of untouchable princess. No, no. She's so unbelievably sweet and funny and she's got the world's greatest laugh. I mean, she's she's not, she's, <laughs> you know, she's way too cool for somebody who is that pretty um, and she uh and she you know she, and she's a phenomenal actress and and for me was the thing that made it possible for me to uh to do this you really depend when you're acting on what you're getting from the other person which is something that was a new discovery to me on this movie um which i'm sure is old hat to experience to seasoned actors she just constantly gave and gave and gave and gave and and uh, her she's very selfless performer she's really she's never about making herself look better she's always about making the movie great were you nervous about taking on this role you know about acting yeah I, I mean I was worried that the transition from voiceover to on camera would be a leap and it was a little bit of a leap but not as much as I had feared it was it was something that I fell into uh, pretty quickly was the voiceover for, for so many years, was that a deliberate thing? Did you want to, in, in a sense, hide behind characters and not be on screen yourself? Or did, had you just fallen into that as well? No, I had always in, enjoyed both both facets. I, I, I had done stand-up in college and done you know, a fair amount of musical theatre when I was a kid. And, and so it, it was never an intention of mine to, to do voiceover and nothing else. You know, any kind of uh, performing is, is, uh, is appealing if it's appropriate to my abilities. You know, I, I would never go out and try to play, you know, Rocky. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you mentioned musical theatre there, and there's one musical number in this film, which is brilliant. Um, I love it. We came out singing it, actually, from the film. It's something you love. Music, musicals. Will you ever do a musical? At some point, at some point, I think, yeah. I mean, I, 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 it would be nice to do a filmed musical. If, if I do a musical, I'd rather do one on film and, uh, rather than on, on Broadway. Yeah, that would, that, that would probably be at least two movies down the line from here. Favorite musical? I could tell you James is straight away. <laughs> Grease. Yeah. He loves Grease. Really? Yeah. I know it's not sort of your classic MGM50 stuff, but, yeah. you know, that's just, it's my thing. I like the old school one. Calam Weirdly, Calamity Jane is one of my favourites. Yeah. I, I just remember watching it. I remember seeing my mum in it, you know, when I was a kid and stuff. Yeah. Not in the film, but on, on right. stage in our local theatre and stuff. What's yours? I, uh, you know, my favourite movie musical is probably The Sound of Music. I think it's, it's way underratedly way ahead of its time have you been to see sing along a sound of music <laughs> it's Please amazing oh god it's a it's yeah it's miserable <laughs> yeah yeah because i because i, I, I want to hear the fat guy next to me as opposed to julie andrews um, julie andrews is in town isn't she at the yeah. moment yeah she's doing a one woman show um, in london but my fair lady is probably the as far as uh, achievement in um, musical writing, My Fair Lady probably stands up as the the pinnacle i'm speaking of music did i imagine you in the film at one point start singing the chorus to Tarzan Boy by Baltimore. Yeah, no, that's in there. Yeah, no, I thought so, yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that it's a Western set in the 1880s, but you get a 1980s Euro pop hit in there. Yeah, we figured like that, that, that could still be bought in the moment as what it's supposed to be, that Albert's accidentally stumbled on something that won't be sung for another hundred years at least. <laughs> It's a particular favourite of mine, so I enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah, but that's good. The film's kind of d does that a few times where there's there's kind of, you know, more up to date reference points set in this 1880s sort of thing, yeah. which works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really well. It's kind of, I don't know kind of how to describe it, but but yeah, it, it works really well. Yeah, we, we, we never try to lean too hard on pop culture references of today in this movie. We kind of, we did try to confine ourselves to the 1882 world as far as what the characters could reference and um, before we go what's next are we getting ted 2 when 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 might that be getting ted 2 uh ted 2 comes out uh, 2015 summer of 2015 we're writing it as we speak great um are you yeah. getting distracted writing it watching what are you watching because <laughs> uh, the movie after that will obviously be whatever you're watching musical. whilst you're trying to write ted 2 yeah no we're we we we've we we are almost done writing ted 2 and then we start filming it some point later this summer S some point this year some point they'll push me onto the set and I'll start. <laughs> and then it's the musical. And <laughs> um, Seth, thank you so much. It's been great to thank chat to you. Thank you for having me. Thank Thanks you. so Cheers. much. Thanks. Cool.